I will listen to Janina Gavankar read audiobooks anytime. Star Wars canon had a bunch of new material dropped for the month of July. A new novel, a web series, and some great comics were all highlights for the month. I'll put time codes in the description below for each new piece of canon material. I won't spoil Inferno Squadron, but the comic recaps will have some spoilers. Let's jump in and go through all of them. First up, the new novel by Christy Golden, Battlefront 2 Inferno Squadron. Battlefront 2 starts during the events of Episode 4 New Hope. Our main protagonist is an accomplished Imperial pilot on the Death Star. She witnesses the destruction of Alderaan and is part of the defense at the Battle of Yavin. She escapes the destruction of the Death Star and her TIE Fighter and makes it back to Imperial space by stealing a rebel ship on Yavin. Item Versio is then recruited for a special ops force called Inferno Squadron to help snuff out the rebel insurgencies. I immensely enjoyed Inferno Squadron because of the view from the Imperial side. The book does what so much of the new Star Wars canon material has done, made the Empire a shade of gray instead of black. The overall Empire is still evil, but the books have been able to give faces to the nameless evil the original movies put forth. Aiden is another great example of this. She is a product of the Empire in the environment she was raised in. She still shows signs in the novel of being a good person, or at least having qualms about the action she takes. She believes in the Empire and what it stands for, but the novel shows how complicated beliefs can become when you develop relationships with the enemy. A good portion of the story takes place with Inferno Squadron undercover with a rebel group who used to be part of Saul Guerrero's partisans. The members of Inferno Squadron develop relationships with the rebels, and it makes their jobs harder than killing just nameless rebels from TIE Fighters. The book is a good spy novel along with a good Star Wars book. It gets dark and Golden does a great job of exploring the characters in the story. I've enjoyed both of her novels written for canon, and fans of Clone Wars should definitely check out Dark Disciple. Star Wars fans should give Battlefront 2 a chance, especially if you plan on picking up the video game Battlefront 2, which will have some of these characters as playable heroes in its story mode. I can't wait to continue the adventure with Aiden and Inferno Squadron in the video game. The next new major canon material to drop for the month was the web series Forces of Destiny. The series to date is eight episodes long and are short two minute adventures with some of the more prevalent heroines from the Star Wars universe. Some shorts were better than others, but were all fun to watch. I enjoyed the episodes with Ahsoka and Leia the most. My favorite is the Ewok escape episode, which showed Leia and Wicket making their way back to the Ewok village and getting past a few more stormtroopers. My next favorite was with Leia and Sabine from Rebels. Leia was passing information onto Sabine about Imperial bases. I think this episode highlighted what the web series could be. It was a quick adventure, but added to the overall Star Wars universe and the two characters shown in the episode. Not all of the episodes did this, but Bounty of Trouble was a standout because of its content and the characters' actions. On the flip side from the Leia adventure were the two episodes with Rey. They weren't great, and I could have gone without the metal-eating monster on the sands of Jakku. They were fun little adventures, but didn't add much overall. My next least favorite episode was the one with Jen. I didn't think it fit her character from where we see her in Rebel Rising or at the start of Rogue One. Maybe it was before some of the events in the timeline, so she was more apt not to keep her head down. But the Jin from the books was all about a low profile and not getting involved after she left Saw. It was the only episode which stood out as not exactly fitting into canon. I did like the two episodes with Ahsoka, with the one about getting back to the Jedi Temple for the ceremony being my favorite. It captured Ahsoka and what she stood for as a Jedi perfectly in its short two minutes, and I loved the parts with Anakin and Yoda waiting for her. I liked the short web series and look forward to watching more of them. I get the complaints about the animation not being great, but it didn't bother me because I was more focused on the overall stories. After the book and the web series, the canon material for the month is the usual comics. First up is the conclusion to the Dark Maul 5 issue run. The conclusion to the series was well done, and the fight between the Padawan and Maul was fantastic. The Padawan put up a valiant effort against Maul, but could not overcome the Sith Lord. The ending with Palpatine was another highlight. He knew Maul wanted to prove himself against Jedi, and he knew of his plan the entire time. I would expect nothing less out of the eventual Emperor. Maul's revenge on the slave dealer was also a good conclusion to the overall story. What I liked most about the short comic and the conclusion was how it showed Maul's rage not being quenched by killing a Jedi. In the end, it did nothing for him, except make him want to do it again to see if the next fix will satiate his anger and hatred. 
the act actually made him feel more hollow. This was a great note to end on, and a good glimpse of where Maul would eventually end up on the sands of Tatooine. Next up is Darth Vader number three, and the series continues to be a new highlight for the comics overall. Vader is on the hunt for a Jedi to defeat and take their lightsaber. He arrives on the planet where Master Karik Inthala has been practicing the Jedi penance of Barish. The Jedi Master is strong in the Force, and seems to be a great warrior. What I enjoyed most about this issue is that it surprised me. I was expecting Vader to easily defeat the Jedi Master Master and gain his lightsaber, but Master and Fala beat Vader soundly. This was a great twist because this is still Vader in his infancy. He has just turned to the dark side and is more the rash Anakin than the cold killer we see in episode 4. This is my favorite comic of the month, and each new issue of the series has been great so far. I wasn't sure about a series with an early Vader, but the comic is proving to be a fascinating read. If you're a fan of the prequel movies, this is a great pickup to continue Anakin's story immediately after Revenge of the Sith. From the best to one of the weaker issues for the comics of the month. Star Wars issue number 33 is a one-off adventure with Luke and Leia. It was okay, but the story felt rushed. This would have been an adventure I would have liked to see play out over a few issues of the series. The planet Luke and Leia crash on was interesting, and it would have been cool to see them survive on their own during the first issue. Then discover the sentient alien race in the next. They could have then spent the next issue fighting with them and then discovering a common ground to fight against the Empire. The third issue would have then been the fight against the Empire and Luke and Leia escaping. Instead, the entire story was crammed into one short issue, and it shows in the execution of the story. There wasn't enough development to fully enjoy the adventure Luke and Leia had. This would have been a much better story to explore than the five-issue Screaming Citadel crossover mess. The main Star Wars line has been a bit of a disappointment over the past few months. Hopefully it picks back up leading into The Last Jedi. I'm eventually hoping for a time jump into the period between Empire and Return of the Jedi. The other crossover series with Screaming Citadel was Dr. Aphra, and it had two issues released in July, number 9 and 10. The issues deal with Aphra trying to sell the unlocked consciousness of the ancient Jedi Raw. She has found a way to keep him from taking over droids and is selling him to the highest bidder. Issue number 9 is a setup comic showing all the different players Aphra has invited to bid on Raw. The most interesting development in this issue was the two psycho droids calling Darth Vader letting him know that Aphra was alive and well. The second issue goes through all the bids the clients are offering with the end showing Raw break free to wreak havoc on everyone. Both issues 9 and 10 are fine setups to a new story, but the next installments will show if the setups were worth reading. I would still like to know more about the history of Raw and the Jedi from his time than the adventure with Aphra, but I'll take whatever expansion of canon I can get. The last canon comic for the month is Poe Dameron number 17. This was one of the better issues for the series overall. It is setting up an adventure with Bla it is setting up another adventure with Black Squadron, with a character from a previous issue, Sora Linda, popping back up. She was the journalist who was going to expose the location of the Resistance base, but decided she wanted to join up once she realized what they were fighting for. She has been doing odd jobs around the base, but now has the opportunity to help the Resistance with propaganda. I like the setup and the political aspect to the story, and it is a good turn for the Poe Dameron comic. Most of the issues have felt very childlike and cartoonish, and taking a more political bent about how propaganda can help win favor in the New Republic is interesting. Hopefully the setup leads to a good conclusion of the arc, because other arcs in the series have started off well, but fallen flat. The Poe Dameron comic continues to be one I have high hopes for, but it hasn't fully delivered yet. This issue was one I enjoyed, and hopefully the story continues its upward swing. July was a great month for Star Wars canon. Inferno Squadron was a good addition to the canon novels, and one people should pick up if they like any of the books. It isn't my favorite, but it would probably sneak into my top five or six if I had to rank them. The Forces of Destiny web series were good overall, but they might need a bit more fine tuning. The new Darth Vader series is the highlight for the comics of the month, and if you're looking for a good entrance point to the comics, go pick up the first three issues. If not, then wait for the trade paperback of the Darth Maul series. Both are worth picking up and reading. Comment and let me know what you thought of Inferno Squadron if you've read it. If not, what was your favorite new piece of canon for the month? Like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching.